times b. And here we are, we place the x in a, but we're articulating this with respect to b. Here, what we end up saying is that something is not b. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the relationship between 1 and 3, at least at this level, um, 2 and 4. But then we're going to look at the relationship between 1 and 4 and 2 and 3. And that's what we're going to do now. So basically, that's just the general idea. I don't want to introduce any technical terms yet. Uh, I just want you to have a recognition of what it is that we're doing. Now I want to erase the top piece. So, so far, the, 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 the idea is just to have an understanding of the significance of the shading, right? That's all we need to do now. Now we're going to take what we just, I don't want to change my color back to black. Now we're going to take what we have here, and what you'll notice that I'm doing now is I'm slowly going to make the image and the concepts gradually a little bit more complicated as we progress along and introduce new concepts and new ideas until we fully flesh it out, but this is the basis, right? This is a very generic, hopefully understandable basis, right? All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the images, right, just to make it easier, get the visuals out the way, and just keep the statements, right? So in the upper, I'm going to put one here, in the upper left corner, we're going to write everything is B. Everything is B. Okay, that's easy. And then we see that there's a relationship to number three. So we'll do the same. We'll say three. And what do we write in three? Nothing is B. Same thing here. Nothing is B. Very simple. Nothing is B. Okay. Then we, at the bottom, write number two over here. And we see two says something is B. Something is B. Same position, right? Something is B, that position. Something is B. And that's related to number four. And what does number four say? Something is not B. Same position, lower left. Something is not B. Same position, lower left. Something is not B. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to connect um, 4 and 1, or 1 and 4, conversely, with an arrow. And we want to connect 2 and 3, so we connect 2 and 3. But unlike the first example, we also want to draw two arrows that go straight down. So just draw your arrow straight down. I'll explain that later. Right? So your image should look just like this. Um, you can, I guess you could draw along, even though it's written, it's you know, sort of like tactile memory helps in, uh, helps in learning as well. But everything is B, nothing is B, something is B, something is not B, and then all the different connectors. We were able to arrive at this, which should be simple, beginning at this point. So because of, we understand the structure of these events, we are able to get rid of the images and just keep the concepts and now we're going to look at the relationship between the concepts. Okay, so what are the logical implications, right? So I'm going to talk about the, I want to talk about the implications of this, right? So let's separate the board here and we'll move section one up a little higher. Okay. So logical right, logical implications. Okay. First, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to identify um, the actual terms. I'm going to start to introduce the technical terms. But it's not difficult because all we have to recognize is everything that we need to know is already on the board. The first thing that we're going to introduce, that I'm going to introduce, uh, is what is known as Contradictories, right? So we're going to talk about contradictories. So C O N T R A D I C T O R I E S. Contradictories. Okay. Um, when we're talking about contradictories, one must be true. One of these statements, one, two, three, or four, 
one must be true, the other must be false. Right? When we're talking about contradictories, one one statement must be true, the other must be false. Right? One statement must be true, the other statement must be false. Right? When we're talking about contradictories, one statement must be true, the other must be false. I can't have two true statements, I can't have two false statements, and I'll explain that why in a second. So the question is, where are our contradictories? Let's look at number one right underneath contradictories. So number one, right? One, if one is true, if one is true, everything is B. If one is true, everything is B. So you have visual with respect to just the concept, and you have visual with respect to the image. That's why I kept it up on the board. One, if everything, if one is true, meaning that everything is B, then four has to be false. Then four has to be false. Something is not B. That makes, this is where critical think, this is now we're really doing critical thinking, right? And you can just think about this sort of conceptually. If I say that everything is B, if I say that everything is B, then I cannot make the claim that there exists something that is not B. Something is not B. Something is not B. If I claim that everything is B, then it has to be false that something is not B. Similarly, I think I do this next, right? Do I do this next? Yeah. Similarly, if I claim that something is not B, the inverse is true, right? If I claim that something is not B, something is not B, I begin there, then I can't make the claim that everything is B, right? Because at least one thing is not B. So if at least one thing is not B, I can't make the claim that everything is B, and conversely, if I make the claim that everything is B, I cannot make the claim that something is not B. Okay, I hope that's clear. But that's the contradictory. So we see that the relationship between 1 and 4 and 4 and 1, this is why the arrow goes in two directions, is contradictory, right? This is contradictory relationship. And what I'm going to end up doing is just doing it how it's done. So this is going to be my contradictories. We'll draw C O N T R A D I C T O R E S. Okay. My contradictories go in the middle, meaning that the X, the relationship between one and four, four and one, the relationship between two and three, three and two, these axes represent my contradictories. So if I go from 1 to 4, from 4 to 1, from 2 to 3, from 3 to 2, those represent contradictory statements, right? Just remember that pattern. And hopefully that's simple, right? It's regardless of any sort of math or anything, that's just sort of easy to remember. If I'm going diagonally in this image, it's going to represent a contradiction. Why? As the example that I just gave between 1 and 4 and 4 and 1, if I make the claim that everything is B, then it is a contradiction to say that something is not B. Why? Because something can not both be, you cannot make the claim, you cannot make the claim B, but that means and, not B. You cannot both be six feet tall and not six feet tall at one and the same instance in time. Right? You could have been six feet tall, you might not be six feet tall, you might not be six feet tall, you might become six feet tall, but at one and the same instance in time, within the same spatial relation, an individual cannot both be six feet tall and not, not, and not six feet tall. Right? Just as a sort of a bootleg example, just to make sense of it. Right? So it's a contradiction. It's a, what you're saying is a contradiction. Everything that runs diagonal in this image is going to represent these contradictories. What do we say about contradictories? One can be true, one can be false. Both can't be false, both can't be true. Right? It can't be the case that it's false that everything is B. It can't be the case that it's false that everything is B. And it is also false that something is not B. Right? If it's false that everything is B, then 